Hi everyone and Happy New Year! I hope 2023 is off to a great start for all of you and welcome back to my channel. It's yet again been a while but I'm committed to making more videos again in 2023, something I hope to start back in October and I had some technical issues with my editing software and all sorts of stuff. I'm really excited to be back and I'm actually even more excited to start this series that has been on my brain to do for a couple of years now. In fact, I was going through an old notebook where I would jot down all of my YouTube ideas and this was back on my 2021 kind of wish list of things I want to do. I know several creators do things that are sort of similar. Kara from Beauty and the Frizz does her mimosas and makeup on Sundays and I have always wanted to do martini Mondays. It was an idea that actually came to me after my first and only live video that I ever did or maybe even before to be honest I don't remember but I figured you know what why not finally start it in a new year. So cheers to all of you and cheers to martini Mondays. If you're interested to find out what we're going to be talking about today, which you probably already know from the title of this video, then I hope you will stick around and keep on watching. So Martini Mondays, just a brief history. I'm sure a lot of you probably watch Kate the Great Beauty. She very often does videos that involve some sort of a drink. In fact, I think all of her videos involve some sort of a drink. And Kara, my friend Kara from Beauty and the Frizz does her mimosas and makeup. I have been hesitant to do anything on my channel with alcohol, mostly because I'm a teacher. I'm, for those of you that don't know, I guess this would be a perfect time to introduce myself. Hi, my name is Natalia. I'm a concert pianist and a piano teacher, <laughs> and I own my own music school, and I also happen to be a lover of beauty. So I've kind of, I think, put this series off, even though I've wanted to do it for a couple of years, mostly because I've been worried that maybe some of my students would find my channel and, you know, I didn't really want to be promoting alcohol necessarily here. It's also one of the main reasons I try to use fairly safe language on my channel, but you know what? A lot of my students have seen me at recital receptions or at our school parties having a drink now and then. I don't think it's a secret that adults drink and I figured it's, you know, it's something I really want to do. And I think Monday is a perfect day to have a martini because for a lot of us, Monday, while it's a fresh start to the week, can be a bit daunting and a bit exhausting after the weekend. I, as a pianist, don't always relate to that schedule because every day is kind of a work day for me for different reasons. I teach six days a week. I don't really have a traditional nine to five, but you know, even I could use a martini Monday here and there. So today's martini, I figured would be very appropriate for this New York City gal. It is a good old Cosmo, a Cosmopolitan. Cheers. And I will link the website down below of where I get a lot of my drink recipes from. It's actually a gentleman who is the father of a former student of mine. By now she's about to graduate college, which if the fact that Sex in the City came out when I think I was in college isn't dating enough, then clearly the fact that I have a lot of students that are graduating, have graduated, have gotten engaged and married is not a testament to how old I am, then I don't know what is. But that's not why we're here. We are here to start a new year, to start a new theme for the year for me, for my beauty channel. And we're gonna start off with a bang. We're right away going to just give me a wake up call and do a makeup inventory and crunch some of these numbers so that I can be much smarter with my purchases in 2023 and create videos that center a lot around the makeup that I already own. I have a bunch of different series kind of floating in my brain. I haven't finalized everything yet. If you have any ideas for what you would like to see, please, please comment down below. I'd love to hear it, especially I guess once you get to see what we are working with. So without further ado, cheers to my 2023 makeup 
inventory. Now, in this video, I'm not going to have any goals for like what I want to see by the end of this year. In fact, I don't even know what those goals are going to be yet. I do know that I would like to get to know my collection a lot more. I said that last year or maybe even the year before, and life took a turn, as you'll see in a bunch of upcoming videos, which will probably be wrapping up 2022. 2022 was the year that I wore makeup the least in probably over a decade. So obviously getting to know my collection did not really happen. So that's what 2023 is going to be about. Let's just go through the numbers and try to keep this video not too, too long because I am known for that. Maybe that should be a goal for 2023. Brevity, not my strong suit. If I've forgotten categories, if I've forgotten to count certain things, I apologize. I might find some things in bags. I tried, I tried to sift through every cosmetics bag and every handbag. This could be off by a number here and there, but I did my best. For primers, I am including full size minis, micro minis, all of that sort of stuff. It looks like I have 18. How do I feel about that? I feel like that's of course way too much considering I maybe go through one primer a year. I definitely need to sift through my primers, see which ones I like, which ones I don't and get rid of those. Foundations. Foundations actually, I guess because I did a declutter in 2022, I did do a couple of declutters which are up on my channel and foundations was one of those. Foundations was not as scary as I expected. I only have two powder foundations because I don't, as a dry skin gal, really like powder foundations and I need to try these two and see if I even want to keep them. And then my regular like liquid foundation slash skin tints and all of that combined looks like I have 11. Again, unless I've misplaced one or two somewhere in my studio apartment, which shouldn't really happen. So that's not too terrible, I think. For concealer, I have 10 and two of those are correctors, like the little pots. Um, I even still have, I think, the Becca one. Now out of those, I don't believe I really love all of them so that's going to be a project is to sift through see which ones i'm keeping which ones i'm not and then once i see how many i actually like in my collection i can reassess and see if this is a category that needs replenishing for powder this was actually a surprise to me because it looks like i have only five pressed powders but i have 10 loose powders now, why do I have 10 loose powders? I have no idea because I barely ever wear loose powder. So I really need to go through those loose powders and see how many of those need to stay. For contour and bronzer, like single products combined, I did not differentiate which one is which. I have three liquid or creams. So those are things like the Rare Beauty stick. And then for powder, it looks like from the ones I found in my drawers, I have 10. Now, that might not sound like a lot, but it takes me probably two years from my past experience to pan and or finish a bronzer. So considering I have 10, like that's a lot of years. I need to go through those and see which ones I like and which ones I don't. Blush. Blush I knew was gonna be a problem and that's after I did a declutter in 2022. So this number used to be excessively large and now it's just slightly less excessively large. For liquid and cream blushes, it looks like I have 15. And for powder blushes, I have 27. This is all after the declutter. And I have also since that declutter found palette with just four single blushes, which I don't believe I even included in my declutter because I think I completely forgot about that little palette. So I have 31 single pans, 27 of them are in their own compacts, and I have 15 liquid and creams. Uh, should I be getting rid of more? Yeah, absolutely. Will I? I have no idea. I love blush. If anything, I, I just keep accumulating it. Oh, and I forgot to make this disclaimer at the start of the video. All of these numbers reflect everything in my collection up to December of 2022, because anything that I've bought on any of these mega Black Friday, post Black Friday, pre New Year's, New Year's, whatever sales in the past month, I haven't really had time to use any of those products or even put them into my collection. So I did not count them because it's almost as if they haven't really arrived. I mean, they're here, but like I haven't filmed a video about any of those products. I haven't busted into any of those products. And for me to go through and figure all of that out would have taken even longer to prepare for this video. And I just wanted to get started again 
filming and all of that so these numbers will probably go up by a little bit because i have purchased a few things here and there throughout the month of december but i'm not including that in any of these numbers for highlighter i have six liquido creams and i have 25 powder highlighters 25 Yeah, I'm gonna have to go through those this year and figure that out. Face palettes. Oh, here's another fun one. 24. Who needs 24 face palettes? Apparently I do. Apparently I do. So for me to actually try every single one of my face palettes, I have to use two of them a month this year. Like actually use them more than once, I would hope, unless they're hated first touch or some such thing so yeah 24 it's funny because i have like 22 and then i found one more so i scratched it out i wrote 23 and then i scratched it out and i wrote 24. yeah now what do i consider a face palette duo or above but still it's not really i'm not i'm not trying to excuse this situation but yeah duo or above so if i have like a blush and highlight even if they're mini or bronzer highlight or two blushes basically a face palette to me is anything that is not a single compact product that has multiple items in there for some reason i then jumped into lip products so i guess that's what we're doing oh before i do the numbers can somebody in the comments please explain to me aside from the marketing which in my guess is all this is what is the difference between like a lip balm and a gloss and a lip oil. Okay, lip oil, maybe I understand. But I have few lip balms that I swear are basically a milkier gloss. Like, is there a difference? Can somebody please explain to me, specifically the product that I am talking about? Where, where are you? Where are you? Oh, here we go. So the product I'm specifically wondering about is this Hangover Pillow Balm Lip Treatment from Too Faced. I mean, how is this different from a lip gloss? It's a little thicker, is that all it is? Is it just like a really thick gloss? I don't know. Anyway, I counted them separately because the packaging told me to. So lip balms, I have four and then I have three masks. So like the Laneige Sleeping Mask, I have like a little mini Tatcha one, and then I have one I think from pharmacy, like a honey one. I have one lip oil and that is the Merit, is it the Marrakesh, I believe? Here's a fun category. Again, dating myself as to how long I've been watching YouTube and when the whole buying bug really caught me because I do have quite a lot of older products in my collection. Liquid lipsticks. And I did put in not just the matte ones, but like the ones that are marketed as liquid lipsticks, even if they're not, what's it called? Like smudge proof, kiss proof, all of that. But yeah, I have 49. 49 liquid lipsticks. Like liquid lipsticks is not even really a thing. It's sort of coming back, but... Why do I have 49? Bullet lipsticks, 54. That's not that much better. Although I, years ago, even before I started my YouTube channel, I remember having over a hundred bullet lipsticks. So I, I have decluttered over the years. Gloss. I have 19. Gloss has grown on me over the past few years, but I've never really been a gloss person. So even 19 is way too much for me. All of these categories, I need to actually test these products and see how many of them I will regularly wear oh lip pencils oh here's a fun one now granted 20 of these are these packs of ColourPop lip pencils that i bought a year or two ago they were having like a buy one get one free or something and it was these packs they had a pack of nudes and a pack of colored lip pencils and i think at the time i had decluttered a lot of my old ones because they had dried up so for some reason i was in a replenishing mode why i needed to replenish 20 lip liners i have no idea but i have 50 total uh, well, yeah that that needs to be addressed lip pencils and liners i have 50 and that definitely needs to be addressed in addition to that i also counted the jumbo pencil crayon as a separate category like you know the nars 
used to be really popular back in the day. Uh, Clinique has those little like chubby sticks, um, which I have a few of. So anything in sort of that department, I count it separately and I have 19 of those. You know, I was too afraid to actually count up the total lip products that I have, but I should do that, shouldn't I? This is all about holding myself accountable and just being more intentional. That's kind of my word for this year is being more intentional with everything that I do. Fresh start, embracing my imperfections and through that, giving myself a fresh start, whatever that may look like. So let's do this math. My phone is right up there where you guys are, but math was my favorite subject. So let's see if I'm still pretty decent at it. So seven, eight, eight plus 49 is 57. 57 and 54 is 111, 111 and 19 is 130, 130 and 50 is 180, 180 and 19 is 199. And I'm sure there's a lip product hiding somewhere in my apartment. So it's probably safe to say it's a nice even 200, but we'll go with 199. We'll do like the, the psychological mind tricking that every store does, you know, where they take off a penny to make us feel better. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll go with 199. Getting into the last category, which is all the eye products. For eye primers, I have 10. I've been trying to finish one for three years. I have 10. I don't need 10. We need to work on that. Single eyeshadows. Um, I've divided this into three categories. The ones in individual pots that I either haven't depotted or they've always been in pots and I've liked them that way. I have 21 of those. Liquids or creams. So anything in a tube, for example, the uh, some of these like Stila ones, the glitter and glows or the Sydney Grace ones in a tube. What do we call these? This is not a tube. What is this? What do we call this component? Anyway, you, you guys understand. So anything like that, I have 20 of, plus I have three brand new ones in a set from Danessa Myricks that I still haven't used, even though I bought it probably a half a year ago. That's gonna be a separate video. And then lastly, singles that are in self-made palettes. So for example, like here's my Sydney Grace one. So anything that is like this, I have 175 of those, which I was shocked at because two years ago, I maybe had, I don't know, 50 max, maybe not even. And I'm not really a user of single pans, but the YouTube community sucked me in and I really need to do something about this. I'm considering jumping on the bandwagon with Kelly and Kara. So Kelly from Keep Beauty Real and Kara from Beauty and the Frizz. And I think Lock Maiden also has joined them and Kendra, is her channel Kendra Official? I'll link anybody that I mentioned down below, but all of these ladies do like a palette theme every month. They do like a build your own palette. So I am considering jumping on that train if they're gonna continue that series in 2023 because yeah, 175 single eyeshadows of which I don't know, maybe I used three in 2022. All right, and now we're into duos and trios. I only found two of those. I think I found one duo from NARS and one trio from like Smashbox or something like that. So I'm guessing at some point I decluttered a bunch of those back in 2020. Okay, and then for palettes, palettes, which I included anything that's a quad or larger. And again, I'm including everything except for the few palettes that I purchased in December that are basically still in their original packaging. I have 141 palettes and then I have about 10 that are already sitting in a decluttered bin. But since I still have not filmed my eyeshadow palette collection slash declutter, I'm gonna count those in here cause they're still in my house and they haven't yet been looking for a second home. So it looks like I have 151 eyeshadow palettes. Yeah, that number got considerably larger than I think where it was three years ago post. So I guess two years ago post my no buy. Anywho, for those of you that are new, I did a no-buy in 2020 and these numbers are 
looking like I should do another one. We'll tackle things one step at a time and see where my channel lands and if I even decide to do a no buy or a low buy. Definitely a low buy, but I don't know what kind of rules yet I'm gonna create for myself. All right, let's finish this up. We're almost there. We have eyeliners of which I have 31 and four of those are shadow sticks. And then I have five liquid eyeliners. So in total, I have 36 eyeliners. And then I have 17 mascaras, which is more than I thought, honestly. And this is after my 2022 empties. I did try and use at least four or five mascaras in 2022. So I had more and I didn't purchase, I don't believe that many mascaras last year. I could be lying to myself though, who knows? Um, and then lastly, I have 12 brow products. Again, that number is way too big for somebody that's been using the same two brow products for two years. I really need to force myself, I think, to test out a few more of these because I don't really know how to do my brows. I do very minimal brows. I have pretty good brows. Most of what you see is my own hair. I just fill in a few sparse areas and that's it. I don't shape my brows. I don't know how. And so far, apparently, I haven't cared enough to figure out how and yes they naturally are thinner here at the end and thicker at the front while i did pluck in the 90s i wasn't one of those that like went overly plucky so i think this is just more of my natural brow shape it is what it is so but if you have any advice for like how one gets started with exploring different things with their brows i doesn't mean i actually will but i might try once in a while to do something different the only category as i'm sitting here blabbering for no reason that i realized i did not count is my sprays now i don't use setting sprays very often if anything the only sprays i use are mostly like to get rid of the powdery look so i have more of those so let's see i have this one that i've been trying to use up that is almost done we have one i have a mario badescu facial spray i'm gonna count all of these even if they're just like face mists so one two three four i guess you're seeing my um facial spray collection five six this is actually a new product that did get in december but i have used it a few times so we'll count it seven eight nine and the fix plus is 10 and they're all sitting right here in front of me so i don't believe i have any other ones so it looks like i have 10 so let me put these back and then we can wrap up all right so why did i do this especially because i did not come on here to give you guys any deep thoughts on what i plan on doing in 2023 yet i did this mainly for myself i want to have this on record not just in some notebook where it might get lost in my apartment and i've tried to do inventory just for myself many times before i'm not really a very well organized person like i i can't do excel spreadsheets for my life i should start to figure out a way to actually catalog things and take pictures and color stories to compare to what's coming out and all the new makeup releases and maybe over time i will get there but i don't want to put that kind of pressure on myself because what happens is i start i get easily discouraged annoyed bored and then i give up completely i think i've talked about this in regards to other things at the beginning of last year when i tried to have some goals i just want to take it one little step at a time so for me it's a notebook and pen and this time i'm actually putting it on the internet as i said mostly for myself mostly just as a way to kind of introduce this new idea of keeping track of what I have and then figuring out a way to actually use it and see if I can dwindle this down to things that I actually will enjoy. Because right now, at best, I go through and look at a lot of these things and admire them, but I rarely actually use most of these things. So I need to figure out a good, healthy way for me to circle through my products this year. And I am uh, thinking that maybe my next video will be about that. I have a bunch of videos that are uh, sitting literally under my desk and being planned. So what I decide to do first, second, third, fourth, and fifth, we'll see. 
I hope that this gives you at least a little bit of an inkling into the direction that I am going this year. And I hope that you are here for the journey. I know a lot of people in the beauty community are reevaluating their collections, their purchases, their overall anxiety levels over just how much stuff is being shoved at us on a daily, weekly basis. And I would like to you know, put in my two cents and just share my journey with you guys. I know that it helps me to watch others. It helps me to see how other people are processing and handling their collections. I'm constantly learning from you guys. So please uh, drop any suggestions or comments that you have for me down below. Please let me know how you guys are doing, how 2023 is going for you so far. If my editing works, then hopefully this Martini Monday video will actually go up on the first Monday of New Year's. I do hope to return to YouTube more regularly. I'm not gonna commit to anything uh, as far as how many videos a week I'm gonna do or exactly what day of the week I'm gonna do it on, but I would like to do as many Martini Mondays as I have time for. So whether that will actually be a weekly series or whether I do it every two weeks, we'll just have to kind of roll with it and see. But cheers to my very first Martini Monday. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed hearing about my inventory. Other than that, I thank you for being here. I hope that you guys are all doing really, really well. I hope that you're continuing to stay safe, take care of yourself and those around you and I can't wait to see you in my next video. Cheers. Bye guys.